Hello, Sweet Tooth here. Hope your day is going well. Kunamatata. Welcome back. Well, I went back to Megaton, sold off everything, and actually I ran into Lucy West, which was the sister of Ian West, the ones that joined the uh, vampires. So I just wanted to start it up right here. Hello there. Nice to see you. I delivered the letter to Ian. Oh, thank you for remembering. With everything that's going on, I almost forgot about it. You have no idea how much this means to me. Thanks so much. That's it. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, really. I'd talk to Manya if you care that much. She's lived in... Says oh. nothing about... Nothing about her brother, what happened, and nothing. I wish there were more people like you. Oh my god. Um, okay, I didn't need Blanco mac and cheese, but thank you. They do that all the time when you come back. And you always have a stupid thing at the freaking door. Alright. I'm getting rid of... Well, I don't need these things anymore. I bought the uh, other house additions. So I have plenty in here. Get rid of those two. Get rid of what I kept for souvenirs. Right. Put down the bobblehead. I'm gonna have to track down the rest of these bobbleheads to uh, show where they are. I should definitely do that. The only thing I was waiting for is to get 100% sneak because freaking place where you have to go through the um, death claws. I don't know why I want to call them death slice. But. The other thing I'm trying to do is find my special books. Okay. It's good to see you alive and well, sir. You too. How may I serve you, Master? Not really an option. Breathing ants. Man, you will not die. Is it just me, or is my guy getting slower and slower the more he walks?
find Brian Wilkes' father. His father is dead. Oh yeah, that's what I could use. An assault rifle. Can't sleep in a bed, it's trespassing. Even though they're all dead. But I can sleep in this bed. Apparently. Already. Mm, I think I have some bad news for you. Oh no. What happened? Brian, I'm sorry, but your father is dead. He's. He's dead? I guess I already knew. Besides, I'm too tired to cry anymore. I'll stop whatever started this. I ah, promise you. You gotta stop it so this can't happen to anyone else's family ever again. I wish I had met you a long time ago. And then maybe my dad would still be alive. Thanks for doing all this. It used to be kind of nice. No one bothered us there. I guess because we were so close to DC. There were seven of us living there in tall, old brick houses. I think I'm the last one left. Those things took everyone else. Nah. People don't like to stay long in Great Itch. The DC ruins aren't a great place to make a home, you know. In fact, Papa was talking about moving on soon. We've been here for maybe a year. Um, besides me and my Papa, there was... Doc Lesko, who stayed with us, and Will Brandis, and his Mama and Papa, too. I... guess they're all gone now. Alright. What is it? Nah, go ahead. He was a strange man. He paid Papa some caps to help him build a shack and carry a bunch of junk into it. Papa called him an egghead, but his head was shaped regular, so I didn't get it. He spent all of his time in that shack next door to my house. Every time I'd sneak in there, he'd be sitting at that funny-looking TV machine with the green words pushing buttons. Nah, he was a nice man, but he never wanted to play with me very much, and we barely talked. All I know is he was all gone when the ants started showing up. I think they got him too. I don't know. All kinds of doohickeys. Boxes with lots of lights, some funny glass bottles. Oh wait, he had a big, clunky, shiny man too. That was kind of neat. Yeah? Well, there is Will. He was sort of my friend. And then there was his dad and his mom. Right across the street, actually. It was pretty swell having someone to hang out with so close by. Yeah, Will was super nice to me. He was like a year older than me, I think. He even shared his comic books with me. We explored pretty much every bit of Greyditch we could find. 
I think that's why the ants don't bother me. I have good hiding spots. Well, his mom was nice too. She was kind of quiet, but she always took care of me and my papa when we came over. I think she was sad that my mom was gone. Will's dad was... Well, I don't want to be mean, but he was kind of scary. He was like always watching me and my dad real careful like he didn't trust us or something. He always kept staring at us from the windows of his house and typing stuff into his TV box. Will said his dad was like an old soldier or something, but he didn't like doing that stuff so he quit. Yeah. Well, they're big, ugly things that crawl around on six legs. They got huge teeth and skitter around grabbing everything in their path. My papa would always say they're fucking ants. Well, that's what he used to call them anyway. I just call them fire ants. My papa had a gun. He said it hurt those things. But he said they were the dumbest fucking ants he ever saw. He kept telling everyone to shoot for their antenna. Whatever that means. Nah. Those things started coming around only in the last few months. At first, they just crawled around outside our town. But later, they came into town. And, well, you know the rest. Please be... Thanks for breaking game. <sighs> Launch it back up. Launch it back up. Hope it works and doesn't break anything. Yeah, you gotta watch out because these ants like to sneak up on you.
this one. I finally found a quiet place for my family. We've been running from one settlement to the next, just trying to keep out of sight. Now that I'm on the other coast, I feel much safer. Mush safer. Mush. The family across the way from us seems pretty decent. Their kid, Brian, likes to play with my son, which is great. It's hard for Will to make friends because we haven't stayed in one place long enough. Maybe we can finally put down some roots here in Grey Ditch. I was scavenging some of the nearby buildings for junk to sell and came across a working radio. No sooner did I turn it on than I heard of familiar patriotic anthems they used to play whenever Richardson would give a speech. But this was different. Who the hell is President Eden? When did that happen? Are they on this coast too? Most importantly, will they come looking for me? I hope this journey wasn't a huge mistake. Some scientists named scientist named Lesko moved in with the Wilkes family across the street. They are helping him make some sort of a structure on the old lot near the diner. Lesko offered to pay me caps if I helped, but I declined. I don't know who he's working for, but I don't think they're still looking for me. Our supplies are learning low, and I need to begin foraging for food and some better drinking water. I'd have an easier time if it wasn't for the damn ants. I swear they have a nest around here somewhere. These ants are becoming a real pain in the ass. So much so that I had to take a trip to Megaton and buy a better gun to protect my family. It cost me a small fortune. I had to trade every bit of ant meat I had collected, but it was worth it. I'm teaching Frank and Sheila to use it just in case something happens to me. If one of those two, or you two, are reading this and I'm gone, I keep the gun in the kitchen behind the old fridge. I'm going to have to find a better way to protect Sheila and Will from those ants. Ever since Lesko came to town, I'm certain they're getting more and more aggressive. Wasteland ants are bad enough, but at least you can run away from them. These would seem to pursue you to the ends of the earth if they could. Call me crazy, but I swear I saw one start a fire the other day. I don't know how this could be happening. I've decided to dig up my old sidearm and keep it hidden on me at all times. If those things are to get too close, I'll blast the antennae right off their ugly heads. I can't believe I went through all that trouble to leave Navarro and make my way across the country just to get stuck in this shithole. I'll be damned if I'm going to die here. Now that we're cut off from Lesko and Wilkes, I think we're on our own. The damn ants keep trying to find a way to get inside the house. Even as I'm typing this, I can hear them scraping the walls, looking for a way through. I don't know how much longer we can last. Start off shotgun. Yeah, the problem is, if these ants get too close and they start setting you on fire, they're going to keep setting you on fire. They breathe fire. <laughs> I sure as hell can't run. Yeah, this is me walking. 
This is me running. <laughs> oh, danger. Yeah, these ants will actually pursue you for quite a long while. They'll just keep coming towards you. Alright, where's the shed? This could be the fifth time I've forgotten the code to my desktop terminal. I really must learn to be more organized. The password for my terminal is Formicidae. How hard could that be for me to remember? Note to self, destroy this holotape as soon as move to new lab is complete. Where did I go wrong? Batch A27 is a complete failure. I must return to my original formulas and begin the process all over again. Perhaps the pressure of working in these conditions without proper laboratory equipment is to blame. Perhaps I simply didn't splice the correct genetic instructions or perhaps I am fatigued. Whatever the case may be, A27 is proving to be disaster. Disastrous. It's a better way of putting it. I must introduce a new formula soon, or I may not be alive to see my hypothesis come to fruition. Sample location discovered. I found the perfect specimen for my experiments inside Marigold Station. I've set up shop underground for now while I prepare the experiment. All I need is a bit of the of last minute programming on my robot, and it will be ready to perform the delicate injections. Soon I will provide proof to everyone that my formula is a viable alternative to the destruction of these misunderstood beings. Dangers. I realize the dangers involved in tampering with nature. I've heard the rhetoric and the hoopla about playing God. However, I am determined to reduce these poor things back to their original state when they were harmless. Only through genetic recoding is this possible. All that is needed is a proper test subject. My search continues as I tweak the formula. And that's how he made him with f breathe to breathe fire. <laughs> so he tried to put the ants back to uh, regular size. Ended up making them breathe fire. Today, citizen. What's going on out there? Nothing, little boy. Big explosions and gunfire. The likes of which you shall not see. Marigold Station. Marigold Station.
You dirty little ant. Bring it on, nerd. Fire ant nectar. Sounds pretty good. see me. Alright. And is there something wrong with me? Is there a reason I'm going so slow? No? Weird.
Alright. And why I didn't start this until now is there's a lot of persuading. Once I find the scientist. do too much damage. Oh, okay, I found him. Phil, you startled me. You really mustn't creep up on people like that. Man, that's an annoying voice you have. Oh. You must have startled me. I can't do it. Can't do that voice. <laughs> well, yes, I suppose I am. Uh, Dr. Weston Lesko's my name, and it's uh, good to make your acquaintance. Uh, what brings you to my little experimental ecosystem? <laughs> my experiments are of a complex nature and would take a scientist to explain. Oh, wait! I'm a scientist! How marvelous! My foray into reducing the girth of these insectoid creatures is of utmost importance. I intend to generationally reduce their immense stature by way of a pre-birth induced mutagen. Isn't that clever? And then if your intelligence and or science is really high, you can persuade them different ways. My word, you understand perfectly. How marvelous! So, what's gone wrong? Well, I'm afraid I made slight miscalculations in the mutagen. Instead of lowering their size, the brood hatched with a new biomechanism. I call their genetic aberration pyrosis. 
the ability to emit flame from their bodies. I may be able to correct this error, but, but I can't get near my equipment. Your knowledge of experimental procedure surprises me. Indeed, I have skipped a step and directly modified an entire brood. Perhaps I was too hasty. I was so certain it would work. To correct this mistake, I'll need to get to my terminal to modify the mutagen. Since you've offered, allow me to elaborate. My portable terminal is set up in the hatchery chamber near the Ant Queen. If I can reach it, I can continue to work on improving the mutagen. If she were harmed in any way, months of data would be lost. Your objective would be to eliminate what I call her quintet of nest guardians. Filthy little abominations. No, it should all wrap up rather nicely. I've rigged my equipment at my portable terminal to emit what I call an inhibitor pulse. Once I send this pulse, all of the remaining ants will lose their empathic link with the queen and frenzy destroying each other in the process. So that's all there is to it. What do you say? You will? How marvelous. Be careful, my friend. The nest guardians can be quite tenacious. Well, the mutagen has enhanced their fortitude and provided them with what I call pyrosis, the ability to emit flame biologically. They're quite radiation-free, however. Well, as radiation-free as any other mutated creature in the wasteland. How do you go from changing their size to breathing fire? Playing with genetic codes isn't simple. Do you realize one tiny tweak at any point in the last million years could have completely changed us? Going from attempting to change their size to generating their pyrosis ability is no surprise at all. I'm afraid they are not susceptible to anything I can think of that wouldn't harm the garden variety giant ant. Just aim for their antennae if you can. It, it will confuse them quite a bit. Far too curious. His incessant questioning would often come when I was the most absorbed with my calculations. He had no regard for the importance of my work. All scientists take responsibility for their failures because it comes with the territory. I will take this experimentation to completion without roosting on the moral high ground. If I allow emotions to enter the mix, all this time and energy spent will have been for nothing. I can't risk leaving this place. I have to continue monitoring the hatchery for any further mutations in the next brood. I have no time for children and their petty games. What do they know about the importance of my work?
I suppose I could answer it. I've detected some changes within the Queen's hatchery with my... Oh, how marvelous. Please, tell me what happened. Then I will proceed to my portable terminal at once and make the necessary changes to the formula. Thanks very much for everything. You've been quite a useful lab assistant. How marvelous! Which injection did you want? Will it be the ant sight or ant might? Hmm. Probably sight. How marvelous! Ant sight it is! Hold still, please. There we go. Ah! Hey, big book of science. Ah! Taking that too. See ya. Ow. Have fun with your giant queen ant spitting acid on me. That bursts fire breathing ants.
Seriously? She doesn't bother you any? You know, he says he doesn't like children's games, but look, he has a toy car. Oh, you can tail on Mercs. They hunt you forever.
And they usually appear like every time you enter some kind of s subway station. They'll usually like right there in the entrance. Just wait there long enough or go back and come back. Go away, come back, you'll see them. What's this funny suction hose for? The ants! They're all dead! Every single one of them! It was so weird. All of a sudden, the ants went nuts and started fighting each other. It was like they were totally crazy. It was really scary, but kind of cool at the same time. You know what I mean? I wish I had something to give you for all the work you did, but I never really had much to start with. I guess now you'll be on your way and I'll have to try living here by myself. Hope you'll come back and visit someday. Really? Oh boy, thank you so much! I'll wait in my old house for you to come back. I need to bury my papa anyway. Just don't forget about me. Well, Papa always told me about my cousin Vera. She lives in some big giant ship somewhere or something. Papa called the place Rivet. You're. All right. It's a lot of running around to do. What's up, Wastelanders? This is Three Dog Bow Wow, and you're listening to GNR. That's Galaxy News Radio, in case you forgot. Everyone ready for the Capital Wasteland's latest news? Me neither, but it's that time again. Hallelujah! The urban legend is real, children. He's real, and he's out there every day helping poor schlubs like you. The latest and greatest. Know what I've decided, children? I'm gonna start a book club. Right now. Wanna join? Good, cause you got no choice. Our first masterpiece is called The Wasteland Survival Guide. Written by Megatons I'm on duty. Home, Make it quick. Brown. Oh, and get this. Researched and co-authored by none other than, <laughs> yep, you guessed hey. it, that tenacious teenager from Vault 101. Now, let me tell you, this thing's got all sorts of useful tips. Where to find food, how to deal with radiation, tons of stuff. Survive, thrive, and revive. That's the name of the game. The book is the Wasteland Survival Guide. Pick up your copy today. Until next time, this is Three Dog. Ow! And you're listening to Galaxy News Radio, bringing you the truth, no matter how bad it hurts. Now, some music. This is a high priority message. Backup is needed at our location. Any personnel listening on this frequency, please report at once. To anyone who can hear me, my name is Werner. I come from a settlement to the north. I have information of great value to anyone willing to help me free my people. Please, help us. This message repeats. To anyone who can hear...
I'm on duty. Make it quick. She sums her life. Chief. Depends. Got any psycho? I could really. Ha! That's what Cindy says too, but I got the itch. I needed. Hey there. Yeah? What do you want? The muddy rudder. Stop that. Don't make me smack you. I ought to lock you in your goddamn room, you little brat. And stay away from that CJ bitch from now on. I wasn't doing anything. And CJ is my friend. I hate you. I hope you die. I just back away from that one. Let me introduce myself. I am Gary. My then you are in for it. Yeah, he comes by every night around closing time and tries to get Cindy to let him close up. Thank God she's smarter than. Thank you. Yes, I'm on duty. Make it quick. Ready? That's great news. I hope there aren't any problems at the Jefferson. Hey there. Welcome to Potomac Attire. Yes. Hey there. Oh. Nice to see you. Who's Vera? No problem. Charmed to meet you. I'm Vera Weatherly of the Weatherly Hotel. Well, I really shouldn't tell you, but have you heard about Polly Cantelli? He's addicted to chems. His poor wife Cindy is at her wit's end. You haven't heard? Angela has the hots for Diego. But since he's a priest, he's been putting her off. One of these days, she's just going to jump his bones. They say Mr. Lopez is losing it. He stands on the top of the bridge tower for hours at a time, just staring out over the city. Poor dear. I know what it's like to be alone. I'd love to take him in. Don't worry. I have the means to keep him fed and healthy. But most importantly, safe. Oh, that's wonderful. If you ever wander back into Rivet City, why don't you check up on us? You're always welcome. Problems to report, I assume? Hey, 
Hey there. Now you go back to the little kid. And it cleaned everything up. I hope you found me a place to live. You really found her? Oh, thank you so much! I can't believe everything you've done for me. Most people would have kept on walking when I ran up to them screaming like I did. I'll get my stuff together and move on out there right away. Come visit me sometime. Well, this one's supposed to be about aliens, but I've never actually seen it, so I don't know. Alright. Yep. I should go for the bobbleheads, to be honest. Bobbleheads help immensely. Because they do like plus 10 or plus 1 to special attributes. Probably should be going for those. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. Hope you have yourself a good day, and this is Sweet Tooth signing off. Love you.